Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today, with the second part of this ongoing tutorial series, I'll be showing you how to use MIDI notes inside of Ableton Live to drive and create and generate visuals and animation inside of cables with the MIDI notes up. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, I just want you to check that you've got a connection if you followed the previous tutorial video. So I'm gonna press play, press F, and as I can see, I have MIDI clock. Great. Okay, so I just made a really simple beat. So I got uh, the, the Impulse Drum Computer and I made a really simple pattern and I'll press play. Bit too fast, let's put it there. Great, so I've got this kick, snare, hi-hats. To hear them, make sure that this blue icon here is turned on. Okay, so I need to get these MIDI notes to cables. So this track here is sending audio out. So I need to go here and say insert MIDI track, and I'm just gonna call it drums MIDI. And now I'm gonna say MIDI from drums, which is this track. I wanna grab the pre-FX monitor in. I'm gonna press play. As you can see, I now get MIDI notes. So now to send the MIDI to cables, I go to MIDI to output loop MIDI port. So if you don't have anything there, you've got to make sure with your preferences MIDI that track, sync, and remote are all on and sending out. So now I'm going to press play. And I'm just going to pull out the notes. I'm going to grab a MIDI notes up. And I'm going to press F. And I can see that I'm getting MIDI notes. Great. Just going to delete this for now. So what I want to do is I want to get the cube. I want to get a cube and rotate it one way with a kick, and rotate it another way with a snare, and change and alternate the background clear color with the hi-hats. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna make the main loop up. I'm gonna pull this down, I'm gonna make a sequence up. Let's just zoom in. I'm now gonna make a render to texture. I'm gonna pull this down. I'm now gonna grab a matte cap material new. Now I'm going to grab a transform. And now I'm going to get a cube. Now we don't see anything yet because it's a texture. So I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to make a full screen rectangle. I get the texture, sorry. I get the texture out from render to texture and plug it in there. I'm going to put MSAA on eight to get rid of any jaggies. So now we have a cube. If I click transform, I can rotate it. So I want to use MIDI notes to change that over there. So Without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to get the note output, and I'm going to say MIDI note, and I'm going to pull this over here. So let's just zoom in a touch. So um, I'm just going to press stop on everything. So there's a few things we can do here. We have the MIDI channel. We're on MIDI channel one, as you can see. And you can pick the note from a drop-down menu, or you can use the really cool learn function. So I'm going to click the op, click learn, I'm going to click the kick. As you can see, it now maps to C3. If I click Learn and the Snare, it maps to the Snare. Let's put it back to the kick. Okay, so if normalized velocity is none, then the velocity coming out is between zero and 127. Let's press play in this clip. And I'm just gonna deactivate the hats and the snare. So uh, if we scroll down here, we can see the current note the velocity of the note and the gate. And the gate becomes true if there's a note. So if I'm gonna pull this out now, as you can see, watch this one here. It's open for a longer period of time. Great, so that's the basics. So now I wanna use this MIDI note information to make some things happen. So I'm gonna first of all pull this down and I'm gonna grab the toggle bool up. Now every time it gets a trigger, it alternates between true and false. That's pretty much the long and short of it. Watch this. There we go. So now I'm gonna pull. Um, I'm gonna pull this down, and I'm gonna grab the bool anim up. Okay. So now we need a trigger. So I'm gonna use a cool little uh, new op over here. Just tidy this up. I'm gonna pull this out, and I'm gonna grab the trigger send. So this allows me to send triggers around the patch. So I'm gonna make a variable name and I'm gonna call it trig one. 
And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say trigger receive like this. And I'm going to give it trig1. And now if I plug this in and press F for signal flow, you can see I'm getting this trigger and it comes here. Really nice way to just stop me having to pull cables over like that. So let's pull this over here, tidy this up a little bit. So I now have this bool anion, and as we can see, um, when a true or false signal comes in, it goes between value false and value true, so zero to one, okay? So we can use this to make this cube rotate. So I'm gonna say, let's get the value and plug it into transform rotate x. Not doing a lot because we're only going between zero and one. So if I put this on 90, There we go. So I can change the duration here to be slower and longer. So let me just put it back in 0 0.5. But there's a little problem with this. If I now change the BPM to 200, my animation here never finishes. So I like my visuals to um, follow the BPM. It's a really easy way to do this. So we're gonna go to MIDI clock and there's a tick duration here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're going to pull it out and we're going to plug it into duration. Now watch what happens. It's really fast because tick duration is changing. So we're going to go here and we're going to add a multiply up like this. And now, as you can see, we've got it on two. So if we turn this up, we can make the duration go really slow. We could put it on one or 0 0.5. So this is a really cool way to um, change this. And now what happens is if I go to 200, my animation here always finishes. If I go to 121, it matches accordingly. So using the tick duration and the multiply is a great way to make your bool anim animations follow the BPM. So this was really quick and easy just to set up the kick. So let's just tidy this up a little bit. And now I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna move it over here. So now what I'm gonna do is just tidy it up, zoom in, and I'm just gonna copy this. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this. So I'm gonna use the trigger out from the bool anim and just connect it like this. I'm gonna get the event out from MIDI note and I'm gonna put it in there. So this is gonna be the snare. Let's just make a little note here with a comment. I'm going to call it kick. I'm going to call this one snare. Okay, so now this also needs the tick duration. So I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to plug it in there. Okay, so this we're now going to use to make the cube rotate the other way. So I'm going to grab the value out and I'm going to plug it into the rotate Y. But it's listening to the same MIDI note, right? So let's just stop. Let's activate these notes. We click MIDI note, we click learn, trigger the note, and now it's changed. And now when we press play, so we're now gonna get a different animation for the kick and the snare. That's how quick and easy it is to set up. So now I wanna do something a little bit more interesting. Let's move this out of the way. So I'm gonna grab this, do Control C, Control V, and I want to do it now with these two. But um, I don't want to use two MIDI note ops for this. So we've got a new one for that. So I'm going to pull the MIDI event out. And I'm going to grab the MIDI note filter. This allows you to read a range of notes. So this also has a really cool learn function. So first of all, let's me let me turn these notes on. So I've got this one and this one. So I go here to learn. Click this and click this. And as you can see, it's now mapped correctly. So here we have um, our trigger out. I'm gonna plug this into toggle bool. I'm gonna link the bool anim executable through. This is just to like stop ourselves having to pull a lot of um, triggers through. It just keeps it nice and tidy. So now what I wanna do is I wanna change the clear color. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna make the op clear Color. Let's zoom in a little touch and look at what's happening. So I can click here and I can change the color. Now, something I want to point out is, um, see the alpha here? When I change it, it goes black. This won't work unless you've got a render to texture because it needs to be a texture for this to work. So just to point that one out. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to generate a random number on each trigger. So I go here and I grab the random two up. And this generates a random number on a trigger. It's going to get a little bit full because we've got two programs running today. So I'm going to just press play. And we can see with each hi-hat, we're getting all these different random numbers. So I'm going to put it on 0 0.2 as a minimum and 0 0.6 as a max. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I'm going to grab the HSB to RGB up. And it's got these RGB outputs. I'm going to plug them into the RGB inputs of clear color. And now if I change this hue slider, as you can see, I'm changing the background over there with just one number. It's pretty bright though, so I'm going to put saturation on 0 0.4. So, as you can see where I'm going with this, I'm going to get this random number output, and I'm going to plug that into Hue. And now I get like a different color on every single hi-hat strike, and I'm only using the MIDI note filter, not MIDI note. So this could allow me to get like six MIDI notes, or 12, or 24. So, now I also want it that um, on each hi-hat, I want the alpha to change. So I click on the bool anim from the hi-hat, and I'll say value false, zero, value true, one. If I look here, we're missing the tick duration. I'm just going to plug that in. And now I'm going to get this output between 0 and 1, and I'm going to plug it into the alpha component. As you can see, it's kind of fading in and out, right? And this is why we've got that tick duration. We could now put this on 0 0.5, and it's very fast. We could put it on 4, and it's like this. So I'm going to put it on 0 0.5. I want it to be snappy. So this was the real basic example of just how to get MIDI note data from Ableton Live and how to use it to create, generate, and animate some live visuals inside of cables. And it was really simple and basic, but you've got to get the grasp on the basics before you can do more advanced stuff. So that's the end of this second part in the tutorial series. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to use MIDI CC signals and how to set them up in live, send them through to cables, and then use them to do some post FX on uh, the output from the render to texture up. I hope this video has been educational and informative. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.